Hey guys, welcome back to layout update number two. Uh, it's been about six weeks here since my last update, so I thought it was time to show you what I've been working on. Before we get into it, uh, please like, subscribe, and comment. That really gives me the motivation to continue making these videos for everyone and sharing my great progress with you guys. Uh, also, you're gonna wanna subscribe because I'm gonna be doing a series here, which I'll show you a teaser of in a minute, uh, highlighting some of my favorite pieces in my collection. And the goal of that is not to brag or show off or anything like that. It is just to share with you some awesome pieces that have been made by Lionel or MTH or you know even some brass stuff that was made you know 20, 30 years ago, um, and make you aware of some great even secondhand product that maybe you could find on the market uh, you know that isn't necessarily in Lionel's latest catalog. So that is really just to share with you guys. Uh, and, and help bring enjoyment to, to everyone in the hobby. So, like I said, be sure to subscribe, and here's a quick teaser on that video. All right, so first up, backdrops are in. Uh, these are just Scenic Express backdrops here. Uh, they are, I think they're like 10 or 12 bucks for a 32 or 36 inch piece. Um, I'm overall pretty happy with them. Uh, I mean, there are definitely some pieces where you can see some seams and the skies don't quite match up, but that's not a big deal. I really just wanted to splash a color back there and, uh, and I have some building flats and, uh, and some other things on the way that I'm going to use to cover up some of those seams. So these are temporarily sitting here for now. I need to nail them in. You can see they're a little uneven in some spots and need to be trimmed up. So all that will be done. Uh, but overall, pretty happy with them. Like I said, really just wanted to get a, to get a splash of color back there. Next, we have some uh, Glenn Snyder display shelves that I put up. And I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with this area uh, because have some pictures and stuff that I would love to put there but when I measured it out I realized it was 28 inches um, which is a pretty nice length and, and gives me the ability to put some larger steam engines up there um, you know kind of the northern uh, pacifics um, you know you can see the 412 2 there so some some stuff that isn't necessarily articulated but um, uh, but it's still you know some nice pieces to show off and I, I wanted to uh, to kind of have some additional engine storage, right? Which was one of the main goals of this whole thing. So that came out really well. Um, I just ordered these from Glenn Snyder. Uh, they will cut them for you. So you get a really nice edge and, and, um, and clean finish on them. Uh, I think it's like a dollar a piece or something to have them cut them. And, uh, we got them screwed in and, and, uh, ready to go pretty easily. You can also see there, I added uh, some artwork on um, actually an old photo, black and white photo of Rutland number 90. Um, not the famed Strasburg number 90 that we're all waiting on a model of here this spring. That is the Green Hornet um, Rutland number 90. So that was a photo that my grandfather had. It was one of four engines uh, that was painted Rutland green. And uh, there's a, I did a video on that. Uh, on that engine and the, the custom paint job of the actual Lionel engine uh, that Harry Heike did. So there's a video on that out there if you're interested. But I did want to put that that picture up there. It's a nice tie and uh, some sentimental value on that. Next, you might have noticed the the engine storage tracks that I talked about in my last video are all in. They're weathered. I have bumpers in there. Uh, so those are the Gargraves bumpers. I had a big pack of them left over. And uh, we got those installed. Um, I do need to trim a couple of them up just to be able to fit uh, two big boys in there in uh, these two center tracks here. Uh, those will be my big boy tracks. Um, 
And if you want to see a video with those big boys, hint, hint, be sure to subscribe. Uh, that's going to be featured in, in my upcoming series about some of the pieces in my collection. Uh, but these tracks are wired up, uh, ready to go. I can control them through my MTH uh, AIU and DCS system all from my tablet. Uh, so I'll show you at the end here how I do that. All right, so the next thing here is this uh, awesome water tower. My grandfather Scratch built this, and I was trying to figure out a place to put it on my layout. I think it's going to work pretty well here, kind of coming out of the engine storage facility. Uh, it's it's uh, it's weathered and everything. It looks very nice. Um, and like I said, I think, it, I think it fits pretty well there, so I'm excited about that. And you might have noticed uh, with the centipedes sitting there, but I talked about this you know, this track, what I was going to do with it or what I was going to try to do with it um, in my last video and wasn't quite sure. So an update, I was able to to get it to work and uh, radius wise, I had to watch the curves and make sure they weren't too tight, but I'm able to get uh, my centipede in and out of there because that is a pain to take on and off the track. It is an awesome engine, but man, it is difficult to take on and off the track. Um, as well as I can fit, you know, I could put a bunch of cabooses or beasts in there, uh, or uh, a big boy or challenger or a large engine with, with you know, an auxiliary water tender or even two. So it gives me some nice long storage. Really happy with how that came out. Uh, the other thing you probably noticed in general is the track is all weathered. So I did a video on how I did that. You'll probably see that on my channel, but I just use these Sharpies from Amazon. 10 bucks for a three pack. Uh, and actually I did the whole expansion with one marker. Uh, so I bought six markers. You know, gonna do the rest of my layout too, but I, I was surprised at how far one marker went. So if you haven't seen that video, be sure to check it out. All right. So you might've also noticed here the uh, logging camp. I've got the buildings out. Like I said, I'm really not happy, too happy with the backdrop there, but a lot of that's gonna get covered up. So. Not a big deal. Um, we've got the buildings out and set up. I've got the sawmill building out. I need to fill it with some detail parts. That's probably something I'll do much later in the process uh, when I'm done. I know there's some kits and things out there for saws and uh, kind of a whole a whole big series on on how you can do some of that. So um, I am uh, I'm excited to do some of that at the end. But both of our, our logging tracks here, uh, this one where the Shea is, and then this one are wired up, ready to go, tested. So far, everything seems to be good. Like I said, I really want to, I really want to make sure that I put them through the pieces um, before I do any scenery, because there's nothing worse than ripping out track and redoing stuff uh, after you've done scenery. So I will probably hold off on the scenery process, uh, but for now, everything's in there, and some of these buildings and things will get. We'll figure out where they go. Um, but overall, pretty happy with how it came out. So this area, I've kind of marked out here uh, where uh, I'm going to have a water feature and probably going to have uh, some culverts that go under those tracks and have, you know, like a, a little pond or something that feeds the sawmill there. Um, this is probably going to be a little bit smaller. And then ultimately, we'll come down here to a waterfall for uh, the trestle, which I'll show you in a minute. All right, so the trestle is in. Uh, it's screwed down, and everything everything came out pretty good with it. Um, I do still need to build the piers right now. I've just kind of got it sitting on two-by-threes temporarily, but I'll build some foam piers there out of, out of pink foam uh, that it'll sit on in a more permanent fashion, but it's operational. We run trains across it and everything. So this was awesome for me to be able to get this in here. Like I said, in my last video, it came from my grandfather's layout and he scratch built this along with some of those buildings. So, um, yeah, really excited to have it in there. I've, I've been playing around with some of this hikey foil, uh, rock paper that, uh, I used in other parts of my layout, just I could have carved, you know, I could carve this out of plaster or try to do some rock molds, but it's a really steep surface. And I, I want it to be that way because it's a waterfall. Um, and I, to be honest, I just always struggle with rock molds. I'm probably going to go with this hikey foil rock. It's it's plastic um, and it's a pretty thin, 
piece, but you can actually kind of mold it and shape it. It takes paint really well. Uh, so I got a couple sheets of those. I'm going to play around with them and see if I can't get them to work. So I'm going to show you guys what I use to control track power uh, and be able to do that on my tablet here. Um, so that's all done through my MTH uh, AIU and DCS system. Um, even though, you know, probably 60 to 70% of my engines and things are Lionel, I do use the DCS system to control my layout. Um, I have a legacy remote as well that I use to run individual engines, but track power, um, accessories, switches, everything is run through this app. And the reason I do that is because it can be done um, very easily. In my opinion, I like this app much better than the Lionel app. Now, we'll see what the Lionel app looks like after the Cab 3. It looks like it's going to get a big upgrade. But let me just show you how I how this works um, from the app perspective, and then I'll show you some of the components and things that I use to do that. So, all right, so the first thing we're going to do is turn on track power. So we've now got track power on. Uh, and that, that controls the variable circuit, which is the loop that is uh, switches and main tracks that are not individually controlled. Um, so you can see it's on, but the caboose is not lighted. So uh, we will go down here to accessories. And this is engine storage one near. So we'll go to on. Oops. There we go. And the caboose is on. So you can probably hear that click there. That's the relay uh, that I have. And I use a separate set of relays to do this because the AIU is really not set up to run track power through it. Uh, it can only handle, I believe it's three or five amps, which if you've got, you know, if you've got multiple, um, uh, you know, if you have one power supply that's controlling multiple sidings and you've got passenger cars or a couple engines on, you could easily go over that amp rating. Um, again, I can't remember if it's three or five, but if it's five, you know, depending on what you're doing, you might be okay. Three, you know, just a set of, uh, you know, incandescent bulbs and passenger cars with an engine, you might, you might go over that. So I'll show you the components that I use here to do this uh, in one second. All right, so here is the uh, control panel that I use with my relays over here to control track power through the, the AIU and DCS system. So this probably just looks like a mess of wires, uh, but I will, I'll, I'll share here on the screen uh, the wiring diagram that I use to build this. Now this is uh, separate on the expansion because my control panel was full that I use uh, to control the rest of my layout. So if you are one of those people that has a beautiful control panel with nice, neat wiring, I envy you. I always strive for that and never seem to end up that way. Uh, but just quickly here, we've got DC power coming in from our DC power supply. Uh, our other input is the AIU, which is effectively uh, another relay. So we've got one relay triggering these relays uh, and our inputs, we've got transformer power coming in and track power coming out. Um, and ground is always hooked up. That's not a that's not an issue. So we're turning on and off the the hot or center rail. Uh, if this is something you guys are interested in doing, let me know. I'm happy to help anyone that, that might be interested in this. I really like the functionality that it adds to my layout. All right, guys. Well, that's the layout progress since our last update. I'll leave you with trains running here in a minute, and we'll show you some of this, uh, some of this expansion in operation, and some great engines running around the layout. But before I do that, please be sure to like and subscribe. Like I said, you're not going to want to miss this upcoming series.
Okay, nice and easy. We don't want to hit them too hard now. 